our Heavenly Father does the promise, we are going to sit down with that promise. That's the promise we are going to leave this church today with. That's the promise that those that are at home are receiving, that you, you are able. Every promise, every promise. And dear Father, some of the promises, we have even forgotten them, but they will still come to pass. Because they don't depend on us. They depend on you. We want to thank you. Because you are able. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise as we sit. Let's appreciate the worship team. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you sit. Hallelujah. Uh, where I am standing, I think I'm almost nimechanganyikiwa kidogo. Kuna saa moja hapa inakubaliana na yangu. Hii. Na kuna ingine pale watanipatia dakika za kuhubiri na wakinipa zile dakika za kuhubiri itaonekana nikija kumaliza nitamaliza saa tano. Tukifanya matangazo tutakuwa saa tano na dakika kadhaa. Kwa hivyo ni wewe nataka kukusaidia tulia. Usiangalie saa. Uangalie mhubiri ili niweze kuhubiri. You know? Nikiona umeanza kuwa na wasiwasi nitakuwa na shida. Ni wira daruta, ni uchuda ninatoa kwanza. Ili msije mkanitekia off. But we have had a wonderful worship, isn't it? and we cannot complain. You know when God ministers to his people and that's why we have come. We should be careful. Uh, actually the sharing today might help some of us because the question that we are addressing is where is my honor? Remember I told you this will be our sharing. Where is my honor? They that wait upon the Lord, the Bible tells us they are going to mount up with wings as eagles. And we say it, for you to get to that level, you have to honor God. You have to honor his word. You have to trust in him. You have to depend on him. Because he is the one that is going to do the mechanism within you. So that within you, God will give you the strength that you can take off like an eagle. So where is my honor? And we are going to look basically from the book of Malachi because Malachi has is, is the book that if you, if you have a problem with your marriage go there, it will rebuke you if you have a problem with your finances, go there it will rebuke you if you have a problem with your children go there, it will rebuke you and encourage you it's a packed, it's a packed uh, 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 book Malachi also means my messenger. So if we, we look at Malachi as the messenger of God, then we will know that God has a message for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it is in the Old Testament, for those that don't know where it is, you know sometimes you are told to look for Malachi, you look at it between Mark and, and Luke, and you can't find it. No, it is the last book of the Old Testament. And it has a message. There is a message for us. Let's read together Malachi chapter number 1 verse 6 to 14. Because a lot of what we are going to, to, to share will come from that passage and many other passages in the book of Malachi. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name and say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. 
And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Says the Lord of hosts. And now I pray thee, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This has been by your means. Will he regard your persons? Says the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, says the Lord of hosts. But you have profaned it, in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. You say it also, behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, says the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus you brought an offering, should I accept this of your hand, says the Lord, but cast be the deceiver, which has in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificed unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is dressed dreadful among the heathen. In summary, what God is going to help us in these few minutes is to find that there is a God who is confronting us. There is a confrontation between us and God. He is asking, where is my honor? And maybe... It's good for us to know in the areas we are dishonoring him. We dishonor him. We need also to know how do we do it. And I want to propose to you there are a couple of ways we dishonor him. Service, sacrifice, attitude, thinking. We dishonor him in those ways. Then God brings condemnation because we dishonor him. And then finally, commendation. So we'll look at three points. Point number one will be confrontation, where God is asking, where is my honor? Then point number two will be the condemnation, because God condemns that kind of a behavior. And then finally, we'll look at commendation. You are dishonoring. This is confrontation, where is my honor? As the book begins... God begins by a confrontation between the priest who was supposed to defend, who was supposed to, to, to carry the, 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 the word of God and God in honor. So he confronts them because they are not doing the same. They are not carrying his name in the manner by which he has asked them to. Instead, they were disregarding his name. Disregarding his name in, in three ways. Number one, they put no weight to God's word. Remember where we said in the book of Isaiah, God is the one who is asking them. You, you have even decided that I'm not there and I cannot do this and I cannot do the other. Disregarding the word of God. Also, number two, no worth of God's name. They never hallowed the name of the Lord. They never respected the name of the Lord. They never honored the name of the Lord. And then thirdly, in their own behavior, they thought there would be no consequences to their disobedience. But be warned, any disobedience that we disobey the Lord, there will be, there will be, if you like, consequence. What do I mean when I say I will honor God in my service as I serve the Lord. When we serve the Lord and we are not excited about it, when we serve the Lord and it is like gradually, what, what are we trying to, to, to do to the Lord? 
Malachi 1 and verse 13, 8 says this. You said also, behold, what a weariness is it. And you have snuffed at it, says the Lord of hosts. The word snuff here means to exhale loudly as to show disgust. In other words, we serve the Lord, but we do it in disgust. We, we, we are in service, but we are, it's like we are not praising him. We are not honoring him. We are not exciting to serve the Lord. When you serve him with excitement, when you serve him with joy, when you serve him because you know the promises that God has done, then you are honoring him. So in other words, he's saying your service does not honor me. May we serve the Lord and honor him. He's asking, where is my honor in your service? You know, because there are some of us that can only serve when they are being noticed. But we need to serve the Lord whether noticed or not. Because our service is unto the Lord, not unto men. So how is your service? Secondly, how about your sacrifice? Your sacrifice. Your sacrifice is not worthy. Verse 7 to 10. You offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And you, yet you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Try it to your governor. Will he be pleased with you except any thy person, says the Lord of hosts? Now I pray thee, be, beseech God, that you may be, God may be gracious unto us. So he's saying we better beseech God so that God can help us. Otherwise, in the situation we find ourselves, even our sacrifices, he cannot honor them. I want to, to stop a little bit and say this. When you have vowed or given a vow, you know some of us are very quick to give a vow. Oh, ile kamori itatoka kwa hii ngombe, hiyo kamori itapereka kwa mungu. And then kamori kanazariwa. Hehe, <laughs> ukekaangalia. Hehe, <laughs> kadavira kanakanyanga. Unaanza kusema story kama hii. Nafikiria, hata mungu, ataelewa. You know, I've been thinking. Let me just tell you what I've been thinking. Sometimes it's good to be, to be open to you. I remember we told you of a funeral we went of a mze that spoke to us a long time ago here. And he said, there are some of you that make the bishop or the pastor tired for nothing. Wewe umekula mbegu na imeekwa ndawa ya kuonesha not fit for human consumption inataka ikue ikulete mazao na umekula. Kwa hivyo unahara, unatumbo, unashida, mambo ukijaribu kufanya hiendelei. Na ni mbegu ulikula. Sasa unaleta hapa bishop, pastor niombe ni. Niombe, tuna cast devil, demons, spirits, Hata tunaingiria your relatives. Hata tunasema kuna generation of caste. Tunaingiria mambo. And the problem is you. Ulikula begu. Hata ukiombewa na akibisho. Ama popu mwenyewe. Umuagiwe maji ya Jordan. Juu ya kichwa yako. Ama maji tuitoe katika tumpu ya Jesus. Nothing will happen. Now that. Because if you have given a vow to the Lord. Honor your vow. And I tell you this. Even what we call um, sacrificial offering. I don't know whether you understand what a sacrificial offering is all about. Sacrificial offering, you are sacrificing so it is going to be painful. Wacha. It is. Hebu tutoe sacrifice. Unaingia mfuko. Unaangalia miatano. Miatano. Hey, sacrifice. Do you know when it is sacrifice, lazima itakuuma mahali. And then you are saying, God, I sacrifice. What did you, you gave a part of your portion. It wasn't sacrifice. So when you vow, honor your vow. Bwana ukinipa kazi, mushara ya kwanza. Arafu inakuja. Do you know inakujaga na bill? Mushara inakujaga na bill. Iko na na bill nyingi ya nyumba, ya gari, ya watoto, ya chakula. Inakujanga na bill. So before you, you do it, think. Because wewe 
unaweza kufa kama Anania na Safira. Waliulizwa hivi, chamba ilikuwa ya nani? Yenu. Mlipouza pesa zilikuwa za nani? Zenu. Kwa nini mnataka kuingia katika tabu hii? Si mungekana pesa zenu, lakini za kuja kutoa unasema ni yote. Sasa unaona unaanza kuingia katika shida. You had promised. There are some of you I'm speaking to you. Umekula mbegu. Hata ukiombewa na pop. Sasa hivyo unahitaji tu kutubu na utafute mbegu, upande mbegu. Wacha kukula mbegu. Kwa sababu mavuno itatoka kwa mbegu, haitatoka kwa maombi. Hata tukupake mafuta na tukuambie ingine ukunywe. Ati ikutane ndani, ingine juu na ingine ya ndani. Haita kusaidia, itakuwa ni bure. Your sacrifice is not pleasing. The people were offering that which was polluted and blind and yet they had vowed. When you vow, please fulfill your vows. Maybe it's that only thing that is remaining in you having your breakthrough. When you will break that and pay your vows. My sacrifices to the Lord are not accepted by him. In the book of Matthew 24 verse 40b, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of this, my brethren, you have done it unto me. The Lord is trying to speak something. Here you are, you have promised, and you do something even to the least of those that are there. If you do it, then the Lord will honor you. In the Old Testament, sacrifices were commanded, but vows were voluntary. Even today, I might give my tithe because it is a command, but a over and above my giving, the vows that I make are voluntary. Ni pale Samuel umebarikiwa, umeenda bungome ukakuta ngwashe, zinakuwa kwa barabara, yani pale ukingia kwenu. Ngwashe. Harafu zigine zinali. Sasa unaanza kusema, ngwashe za barabara zote. Make sure you don't say that. Kasa niliona huko bungoma, tulienda kwa usiku moja, huko barabarani, ngwashe tu, kwanza kubwa, mireyo imepandwa kwa barabara. Wasisemi unakanyanga kwa barabara nasema space hiyo imewachwa kutoka kwa barabara kutoka kwa kwenda kwa maplot. If you vow just give it to the Lord. Amen. So vows are voluntary even today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Malachi 1 verse 14 then God says, but cast be the deceiver, deceiver. Eh? De- eh? Bas. Which hath in his flock a male and voweth to, sac- uh, to sacrifice unto the Lord. Amesema hii ndiyo ndama nitatoa alafu ameona kamoshu. Diko anampelekea bwana. The Lord help us. Because God says, I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts. And my name is dreadful among the heathen. Where is my honor in your sacrifices? Where is my honor in your sacrifices? Now, when I was thinking about this sharing, what actually touches the road is this point. Attitude. Attitude. Where is my honor in your attitude, which is so defensive? If you read the book of Malachi, you will see yourself and see a Kenyan there. We are so defensive and we blame everybody else, not ourselves. Now when do umengia kwa dhambi? You don't blame yourself. Listen. Each time that God confronted their sin, they became defensive with God. Listen to the arrogant response. Malachi 1, 2a. I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, wherein have thou loved us? Are you getting the point? God says he loves Jimmy. But here I am, I struggle. How? How? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord, yet I love Jacob? And our biggest problem is we are wandering and we defend ourselves. Mungu uja nipenda. Umependa fulani uja nipenda. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6b. Says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name and say, wherein have we despised thy name? Then God is saying, you have despised me. But what do we say? God, how have I despised you? 
Because the pride in us is imetuinua mpaka unaambiwa na Mungu you have despised me and you are saying like Cain am I my brother's keeper have you have you ever thought about Cain wapi Abel dugu yako rafa anamwambia kwani mimi ni bebe sita we are so defensive and so arrogant that we miss and God is asking where then is my honor there in your attitude of defense can God really go beyond your defense What is happening in your marriage? You, def- you, you, you blame that one? Blame the other one? And actually, and God is asking you. He wants you to deal with it. Malachi chapter 1 verse 7a You offer polluted bread upon my altar and you say Where are we now? We polluted. You know I was telling somebody Squeezy ama siku zetu Siju kama walikuwa akiweka date ya expiry ya mkate Ruth Kama waliweka tu kusoma sisi tulikuwa tunataka kukula mkate So what you okay, okay thank you What we used to do uh, sana kubusha wale wazee We used to take the bread kwa duka unanukia Kwa sababu kama ina utasikia hapo <laughs> Hiyo mkate umeleta hapa inanuka anauliza Mungu. Mkate inanuka. Hata unaweza ichukua hainuki. One of you has a problem. One of you has a problem. One of you must have a problem. Malachi 2 verse 17a. You have heard the Lord with your words. Yet you say, tumekuchosha wapi? And God is the one who is telling you. If I tell you, why don't you believe me and I'm the one telling you. Nikwambia umeni 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 bo. I love you. Nimekubo namna gani Mungu? Why have I bored you? God is trying to help you see where you are. He is asking, where is my honor in your defense? Siopo unaona wa Kenya tuko pale argument 40 argument tunakuaga na 40 Malachi 37b Return unto me and I will return unto you says the Lord of hosts but you say where shall we return You know that defense will cause you not to mount up because God wants to help you own it Toka kwa hii dhambi unasema dhambi gani? You know it is like we, 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 we normally ukiwa ume umefanya dhambi kuna dhambi nyingi ambazo hazichore hapa, si ndio? Hazichoragi hapa. Alafu mtu anakuambia umefanya dhambi. Namuuliza gani? Na nani? Eh? Na nani? akuje approve Lakini kama umeshikwa na CCTV alafu itolewe unasikia vibaya sana kwa sababu hata afadhali ungekubali kwanza Um couple of years ago here Um, and it was happening all over the country they, they were there were people targeting preachers and i was targeted by somebody who was not living very far from here because that's what we discovered they had targeted me immoral immoral act so he calls me and he says jimmy i want to see you And do you know you, somebody can't want to see you but you're so busy. I was actually very very busy. So he called me again. Wewe unakataa kuniona? What I'm carrying for you is heavy. Then I knew what it is. Then I said if it is heavy, can I help you? Go give it to my bishop. 
then my bishop will come and fire me. Then I will go to where I come from. Finally, he said, I'm in Naivasha. I want to see you. To, so I called the late Mwethi. Please, uh, <laughs> Pastor, to to go to the attack. So I explained to Mwethi uh, what this man carries for me. He did not come. Then lo and behold, that I'm saying either, listen to me, either he was working here or had somebody here who monitored the better. Bertha left wherever. An envelope was dropped in her desk. Lo and behold, I'm looking for Bertha. So I get out and I see an envelope written me. So I pick it and go with it in the office. And I open. Ha! I see my head with my glasses. Lakini kimwiri kingine si changu na nimevak kipande alafu nimeshikwa na mama ambaye hana nguo pu alafu imeandikwa story sasa huyu dada ndiye anaandika story sasa tulikamatwa na my husband na my husband amekasirika lakini ukipiga hii namba labda labda Now let me tell you what used to happen. In a bishop that had those kind of behaviors was caught. They paid those people lots of money. They tried it on me, they got nothing. They tried on JB, they got nothing. The reason is because when you walk in the ways that will please God and you're careful, then God will defend you. I'm not saying I'm Mr. Perfect, but on that one, siku patikana Hiyo siku patika hiyo siku patikana Nikaenda police ku report Jamaa katunguzwa hiyo simu ilikuwa hapa 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 ilikuwa inaonekana inatumika hapa hapa nje kwa gate Nikaulizwa what do we do Nikasema mnaweza mshika mkitaka kama muachilie yeye I don't know why I'm telling you that when God looks at you and he tells you there is sin, own it. Don't defend it. Own it. Wacha kuuliza Mungu. Na unajua Mungu anatumia kwa watu. Eh, atatumia mtu tu alafu naanza kumwambia mimi. Wewe unaona kama mimi naweza fanya hivyo? Mimi na kweli ningekuangalia uweze fanya hivyo, lakini Mungu ameniambia Attitude. God is asking, where is my honor in your attitude of defense? Not if to say what do we have to return from is anything. God is trying to tell them, I want you to come to where I am. Come to where I am and I will help you. Malachi 3.8a says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, where we have we robbed you? Tume kuibia wapi? Sisi atuezi kukuibia. Na anakuambia umemuibia. Malachi 3.13 Your words have been astored against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Defense. We need to honor God. Let's hear him. Because he is speaking. He is telling us our sacrifice are wanting. He is telling us our giving to him is wanting. He's telling us our attitude is so defensive. He's telling us. Then he's also telling us you are thinking is delusional. That is number five or number whatever. You are thinking is delusional. The people actually thought they could handle their riches better than God. But God is telling them, no, you have robbed God, yet you have robbed me. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, wherein have we robbed God? In tithes and offering, he tells them. When a man robs God, he is actually robbing himself. Iyo ujue. Kumuibia mungu unajibia wewe. Ni kama wewe umeweka kwa gala, alafu nengia kwa gala, 
unaiba. I have never seen anybody steal to himself. At sahi tu kona alis, na ni kona 20 thou hapa, naiba mbili, naficha. Takuwa very funny. But I know there are some people that do it. Ni zenu, ni zako. Hata ukimwambia umpi, ni wabia ale sikupi, hizi ni 20, na sikupi ni zangu. It's okay. Lakini saa wacha, wacha urongo. Kwa sababu, anaweza ingia mkono kwa mfuko wa koti. E, e, si kwa ubaya, ni kocha, anatari, anatarisha koti ipere kwe dobi, kwa hivyo, atoe, halafu anakuta makiri ya hapo ya meka. Halafu naanza kuwa embaras. Oh, hiyo, nikuwa nimepewa na Newton. Tulikuwa na kampango na Newton. Tunataka kununua kaploti huko kitui. Unajua kule Susan huko. Kuna kaploti hapo. Kana toka 220, ya katoki pesa nyingi. You are thinking. Now, because of time, this leads us then to, com- to from confrontation to condemnation. God has confronted us. He sees that there we are, even our thinking, our attitude, our sacrifices, our service, all that. He sees we don't honor him. Therefore, he brings condemnation to us. God very far- powerfully confronts his people with their failure to honor him. Now, he presents to them the corresponding condemnation. Where is my honor? Malachi 2, 2 to 3. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will cast your blessings. Yes, I will cast them already. I have cast them already. Because you don't not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn face, and one shall take, shall take you away with it. The word glory in verse 2 is translated honor that two times in the scripture. God says, if you fail to honor me, I will turn even your blessing into a curse. If there is something that I tell God not to, is to turn my blessing into a curse. I want my blessing and anything labeled my name. There is no way you can take it from us. I'm telling you, I have known that. I have known that. And one of these is, I will give you a testimony why I know this. I will give you a testimony. But not for today. If you fail to honor me, the Lord says, then I will turn the blessing into a curse. Listen to what Haggai is saying in Haggai chapter number 1 verse 6 to 10. He is telling them, you have sown much, but you bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with a drink. You clothe, yes you do, but there is no warmth. He that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. You remember one day I said, I have refused to work uh, money bouncing in my compound once. I want money to bounce in my compound a couple of times. And I know some of you believed and you picked that. No wonder your salaries have been bouncing a couple of times. Wacha ikwenda ATM marambiri inaisha. Ya kwanza ni kutoa pesa ya kulipa rent. Ya piri ni kutoa advance. Arafu kutoka pado naanza saidia. Niko peshe. Apana... We want God to help us. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I'll take pleasure in it, and I'll be glorified, says the Lord. Yet look at for much, and lo, it comes to little, and when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from our fruit. God is the one who curses our blessing. But let's honor him. We hear often that God will be no man debtors. Yes, but God invites them to put him to test. He said, bring all your tithe into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now then, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. 
And I will rebuke the devourer, says the Lord, for your sakes. And they shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall he, shall your wine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. God says, prove me. Prove me. Prove me. And there are men and women here who have proved God. And God has been faithful. But there is also a man... In the, in the early century, 19th century, his name was Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor was working as a doctor. And as he, he wanted to go to China, but he did not want to involve yeah, yeah. He wanted God to prove himself. So, Mushara wake, akasema hata enda kuitisha. Hapana. Ataamini Mungu ampatie mshahara wake. Kwa hivyo siku ya mshahara ikapita. Mwajiri wake naye hakuwa na pesa. Lakini Hudson anaomba anasema if if I am going to China and if I'm going to pay my bills, my house rent and so on, then you have to give to make a miracle out somewhere. Patient wa, wa hiyo clinic yao, patient ambaye alikuwa ametibiwa na ameenda hakuwa amelipa akakumbuka akakuja akalipa tajiri ya Taylor Hudson naye Hudson naye huyo tajiri akapatia Hudson pesa naye Hudson akajua this is God and then he went to become a missionary in China we can prove God we can try God and i am speaking to people here that maybe Every, everything you hear, you run with it fast. Be like a Gideon. Put a fleece out. Ask the Lord what you want the fleece to carry. And God will do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, one day we were going to Uganda to preach. And then we believed in prophecy. So in this group of young people, Tumezunguka, tumezunguka, tumeonga na ndimi alafu. That says the Lord. You only need five cents. Five cents only. Nikafungua macho, nikasema siendi. Somebody asked, why are you not going? Because I said, uyo siyo mungu. Shilingi, ndururu utaenda nayo wapi? Utanunua nini nayo? See, nitule tu patiko tutano tu. You know, patiko zirikuwa zikitoka tano kwa hiyo ndururu. Five. The brothers and sisters who went, hehe, <laughs> walisumbuka. Walienda, lakini walisumbuka. Wakija kurudi shule, because we used to go during the holiday. Walikuwa watu beaten up. The following year, again in the same house, we were praying to go to Uganda. But this time, the word came, I will be with you, says the Lord. And I said, Amen. Nikaenda Uganda, my father naye huko alikuwa mgonjwa usiku ule baba yangu anafariki hapa na mimi Uganda naibiwa lakini naibiwa kwa sababu niko na amani sina wasiwasi hata viatu nilipewa na watu watu wengine i have given you this story kuna mtu alinipatia kamfuto nikikafunga kanashika kwa sababu si size yangu tena kanakuwa please akafiki chini ni pale please whatever mnajua huto <laughs> but but that morning when they had stolen everything, I came back to, 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 to Kenya. I'm saying, prove me. Prove me. We can ask the Lord to, God, if you want me to go to this, I want to try you. Because God is, wants us to prove him, whether he will be faithful. We honor him by proving, asking him for those signs that he brings to us. For anyone who will take God at his word, God will respond and he will give him a wonderful commendation. And this leads us to that point, the commendation. Which is, here are my honored. I want God to honor me, even as I honor him. God offers to his people a most gracious, gracious invitation very plainly, God says in Malachi 3.7b, Return unto me, 
and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Take one step towards me, and I will take a thousand steps towards you. What an incredible invitation. God says, come back to me. Come back to me, and I will do the work of cleansing. I will do the work of restoring. I will restore you. Malachi 3, 2a to 3. For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fowler's soap, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and patch them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Notice, God is not saying, clean yourself and return to me. No, he says, I will clean. I like that. It is not me, I cannot, but God will. God will. I will clean you if you will simply return to me. Iyo argument yako na defense umekua now. God is saying, return. 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 Malachi 3, 16 to 17. Now this is my favorite kavas that I say. Tukishikamana kama nololo. Yani tukamatane kama nololo. Yani akutabak. I like to what Molo Motosia says. You know, you know, the Bible is true. And your works will follow, follow you. Hii ya molo mutesia. Tumeifuata, hata begine wako hapa hamjui molo mutesia likuwa nani. Kwa sababu, ulipo kuwa ukikuwa haku wa politician, alikuwa chairman. <laughs> oh my goodness. Then that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son and serveth him. Yes, the Lord has a word for us. If we will value him, if we will honor him, then he will value us and honor us and treasure us. God says when we treasure him, he will treasure us. When we honor him, he will honor us. And let me finish by saying this. One time, I went to an ATM and I think I, I, I was either my son or my daughter, I don't know who I went with. And then we will to sinajua ni ukuta unaweka card inatoa pesa the observation of this child was you go to any wall any you put that card there will be money so th there was no way i could tell sina pesa because every time i said sina wanasema hapana hapana ukienda kwa ukuta yani well the argument of because they were small they, they don't know you have to go to that particular ukuta. You know, kuna wakati ATM wazikuwa all over. Lazima uende hapo kwa hiyo benki yenu hapo inje hapo, eh? Uweke hili itoe kitu. But one of the things that people know is that you can go to your ATM ikuambie no funds. Kwa sababu, we ni kutoa unatoaga na uandikagi maali. Nikuwa nimeweka ngiri moja nimetoa magana keda ma 50. Sasa uwezi toa imia ni 52. Lakini unakaa pale paka unapiga una hiyo kitu. We, nataka kutoa mia. Alafu uh, mtu anatoka kwa benki kuja kukusaidia. Munaweka vizuri. Lakini inasema no sufficient fund. Sasa huyu mtu anakuambia, si usome hapa, no sufficient fund. Inasema hakuna pesa kama hiyo unataka kutoa. Niseme hivi. Kanisa, I'm a service of God, is like a bank, an ATM, or a bank. People come to withdraw from it, and sometimes you can conclude that you are getting nothing out of it. But sadly, it's because you have put nothing in it. So I put deposit so that I can withdraw. When we wisely invest our earthly treasure, we can expect not only to draw upon that which we have invested, but even to gain more when we get to heaven. Is it even possible that our other investment could 
outperform our investment with God? No, it is not possible. Let me throw these three questions as we come to a close. Are you investing your best or your leftovers? Remember, the Lord is asking you then, where is my honor in your investing in God? Secondly, are you serving the Lord with joy or out of duty? He's asking, where is my honor in your service to me? And the third question is, are you potentially even defending yourself and your service to God? If so, return to him and see if he won't pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are asking us, Deliverance Church, Kasarani Zimmerman, where is my honor? And Heavenly Father, we know that what the questions that you ask us, we could be as guilty as those words. We don't serve with joy. We have an attitude of defense. We don't sacrifice the best. Lord God, we ask of your forgiveness that you would forgive us. You know, friends, whether you're at home or in this sanctuary today, we will not finish this service well if I don't give you an opportunity yourself to tell God in the area that you think he has spoken to you in terms of honor. You know yourself. Is it service? Is it sacrifice? Is it attitude? Is it his word? Which area? You know yourself. So I want to give you a minute if you can stand on your two feet. Just stand on your two feet and just tell him. You want to honor him with which area? Is there an area that you feel you need to return to the Lord? And please return to him. Just return to him in that area. Don't look at your neighbor or your spouse. Look to God in an hour like this. Because the question is asking, if I'm a father, where is, where is my honor? Then he says, then, assuming I'm not a father to you, if I am a master, he is the Lord of Lords. He is still asking, then if I'm a master, where is the fear? Do you fear me as a master? And we are all as guilty, either as a father or as a master. Open your mouth. Just tell God what area you want him to help you. What area do you want to go back to him? What area? Which ways do you want to prove him? His faithfulness? Which areas do you want to prove him? His provision? Which area do you want to prove him? Because he's asking, try me. Try me in this. Try me. Our Heavenly Father, here we are standing in this sanctuary. And dear Father, guilty as charged. There are those that are saying in service, Lord, I want to serve you in joy, not as duty. There are some that are saying, Lord, forgive my sacrifices. I want to give the best of my sacrifices to you. Not the leftovers, not the lame and the blind. There are some of us that are saying, Lord, I'm so defensive. I defend everything that you tell me. And I repent today. Dear Lord, my attitude will be, Lord, here I am. Change me. Send me. Deliver me. There are some of us, Heavenly Father, where we are, we are saying, Lord God Almighty, we want you to come into our lives. We will not be disillusionized in our thinking, but dear Father, we will be focused in life. We want to thank you, Lord God. Help us to honor you and to fear you. For indeed we know that you are going to change us because there is nothing too hard for the Lord. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name.
Amen. Let's give the Lord praise as we sit.